conversations with people who are having impact on uh, Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, benefit to their communities. Um, we wanted to kind of share the perspective that we have here and talk with people who are making uh, changes and see how they're doing it and, and what we can do to encourage them and maybe be a part of it. So here we have Alejandra uh, together with me with Alexandra. Yes. Uh, you know Alexandra uh, from her uh, yoga practice and fashion, which we discussed <laughs> earlier. Yes. Uh, Alejandra also has a yoga studio that she started up recently. And well, it's been... Almost three years. Yeah, so Alejandra, two and a half. Do you want me to take over? Take over. Yeah. <laughs> so our special guest today is Alejandra Amin, uh -huh. uh, owner, founder of Viva Yoga Studio. Yes. And uh, recently, so as we said, like about two and a half years, right? almost three mm -hmm. years. And then recently, your new venture, right? Your new business, yes. the Cultures. Is this correct yes. pronunciation? Okay, consulting Cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so super excited to learn more about, especially the new endeavor. But we'll start with just whatever you want to share about yourself, um, how you feel being in Jacksonville, what brought you to Jacksonville. And yeah. I'll take it from there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for having me. This is very exciting. Um, it feels like it's 10 o'clock at night, but it's actually 10 in the morning. Welcome so to my world. It's, I know. It's such a cool vibe. Um, it's causing a little confusion in my mind, like, oh, <laughs> it's evening. Um, but... Anyway, I'm so happy to be here. Um, yes, uh, Vive was founded about two and a half years ago with Jack's Natural Healing. So it's this holistic wellness space that encompasses, um, you know, chiropractic, alternative healing, anything that's non-invasive when you think about pain relief. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also have the full yoga studio, which, you know, I've had an honor of being able to share that space with you as well which in I'm the yoga right for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the you. yoga instructor capacity. Um, I just felt it was something that was not that Jacksonville needed another yoga studio. Not that at all. It needed something that embraced culture and diversity and that was a big invitation to people of color who have never stepped into yoga studios you know um typically when you think of you know yoga who practices yoga in the u.s and um you know for a long time it was this certain demographic and now it's starting to expand and to change and so the the scene when you walk into yoga studios is is looking different now and um very inviting very inclusive very diverse and it's a beautiful thing yeah i can <laughs> I, I think yoga has been traditionally often seen in luxurious settings um so it tends to i think have this connotation um, also, I, I, it's it's expensive to have space and mm -hmm. the space that's required. How did you conquer some of those challenges, you know, to be able to get the amount of space necessary to be able to have the, because you have not just yoga, but you have multiple services, as you mentioned, in your studio. Yeah, yeah. And we actually have, I think in Jacksonville, we have one of the bigger studio, yoga studios mm -hmm. as well. Um, so How that many was, square feet is your studio? Uh, it's. It's 2,500, 2,700 square feet, but the studio itself is about 15 to 1,600 square feet. So it's a pretty large space. When you think about studios, you know, usually you're in a little small mm -hmm. square. Um, but, it, you know, I opened that business during COVID. It was full on COVID. So when I was thinking about yoga studio, breathing on each other, remember we had the six feet, <laughs> yes. six feet distance. So um, I found the space and immediately didn't even, you know, think twice about it. Is it too big? Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it could also be too big because, you know, when you're practicing in community, it's nice when, when, even if it's five people, if it's a small space, it feels like a lot, it feels nice and full. Um, different when you're in a bigger space but because of covid and just people wanting to maintain you know distance a little bit from each other even though we still want to be together mm. flow together breathe together meditate together but still have that distance so now you know if that were to happen god forbid again or just even like a cold or flu mm -hmm. outbreak you know we still can accommodate those who want that distance although sometimes when we're like sardines in there and there's 30 40 50 people it's hard but <laughs> yeah it's hard but the energy is i think is the most like amazed amazing and amplified when you have those large group classes yeah on tuesdays and fridays yeah 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 right. and the space is so awesome because you know for somebody who does like 
the the more um, energetic, fuller classes, we have those options in the evening. Our morning classes um, tend to be a little bit lower numbers. And so, you know, those who are concerned about space also have that mm -hmm. option to you know, come to the morning classes. To have so how are you able to attain and, and get that set up if you don't mind discussing that? And if I ask a question that's, you know, personal to your business, feel free to, you know, say, but I, but I want to... I'll say pass. Yeah, say pass. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I guess, delve into uh, things that are in a, might not be appropriate to discuss, but I am curious what you might want to share with sure. other people looking to start their projects or their ideas, but saying, you know, how am I going to get enough space for this? Right. This city doesn't, this that doesn't normally happen this way, which was exactly the condition uh, situation you were in. Yeah. So luckily I found a space that prior to us going in, there was already um, the certificate of use was already slated for what we're utilizing for. So it was kind of smart. I think somewhere in between, it was like a juice bar, maybe a nail hmm. salon. And I think some things didn't happen well, like they were supposed to as far as certificate of use, because we walked <laughs> right in. <laughs> and we were able to pick up where the original um, uh, space, what the original, the purpose of the original, uh -huh. you know, years back, what it was used for. And so years back, it was a yoga studio and a medical office. So luckily, it was a very easy transition for us. So we signed lease. And in 30 days, we were able to open. Um, wow. I did you, know, did you look for that situation specifically? No, or? I didn't. We well. sort of walked into that um how long I, had you been looking i was looking for well originally we had found a space out at the beach but it didn't feel right mm -hmm. it i wasn't excited we were days before signing a lease and i just my you know i was sitting at um at a coffee shop up the street and you know i kept saying to myself why am i not excited mm. about this i haven't done a thing there's no social media there's no marketing there's no plan there's nothing i was supposed to sign on the monday and that was a friday and so just listening to that inner voice this inner knowing this mm -hmm. intuition like something is not right here i could have just gone and signed and forced mm -hmm. it and it probably wouldn't have been what it is today um but just the ability to kind of like let me sit with this let me not just go because somebody's waiting for me to sign and drop off the check let me just sit with this and figure out what is happening and i thought yeah, it's the space. I was across the street from a, a graveyard. Uh, what is that? Oh, my Cemetery. Mm. And so how could I have a space named Vive, which means live, across from a yeah. cemetery, you know, uh -huh. where it's oh, it gives me chills. the total opposite. <laughs> I know. Like, if you would have looked out the window, we would have just our, our view would have been the cemetery. So um, I just made some phone calls and. The one person who answered is my landlord now, which, um, you know, is Ashko. And um, so she said, I have the perfect space. Oh, well, she said, tell me about yourself. And I thought, wow, nobody has asked me to tell me about themselves as far as commercial, you know, mm. um, uh, companies. They were asking me, what's your company? What's your financials? How much mm -hmm. money? You know, and she just said, tell me about yourself. And I was like, kind of thrown back. Well, I like this. I do this. I do that. And then she said, I have the perfect spot for you. And so we went, viewed it that night, canceled the other lease, signed that one. And then, wow. yeah, 30 days later, we were open. So it is it is a challenge, though. Um, I think commercial, finding commercial leases and commercial spaces right now is very expensive. Um, there's a lot of factors. I think knowing now luckily we made all the right decisions but knowing now i would have looked at you know what's the demand what is the the you know how many people live around me what is the population what is the density um where's parking um so so much to consider when you're opening up a business that you don't even think about until you know now that i'm in there i'm like oh well it's a good thing it all worked out yeah. because yeah i didn't even consider these things how long did you spend in the search um probably a couple of months there were a couple of places we looked at that we thought maybe could work but it was always going to be like a whole build out um mm. you know it was going to require all of that in this space it didn't nothing it required nothing no build out no you know the certificate of use was a very easy transfer mm -hmm. into our name and so it it just was a no-brainer that's great. I mm -hmm. think it's great that you were able to 
uh, I'd say into it into a good situation. For sure. Well, since it's like to me and to you, and I'm sure to a lot of our listeners and viewers, very exciting and uh, maybe passionate subject. So, can you share a little bit more? What was the idea behind Viva? Why Viva? Why you chose to do that? Yeah. Why you chose to stop your day job, <laughs> open yourself up to this absolutely new um, field, not mm -hmm. as in like in the activity itself, but being a business owner, being, mm -hmm. you know, uh, directing people, organizing spaces, events, et cetera. Because you also have a Viva Festival, which yes. we didn't mention which is huge yeah and you started huge you just opened the students like i'm gonna do the festival in a right months. right right <laughs> yeah we did that was so we started off doing festivals and it was sort of a grassroots movement of um you know getting the name vive out there and i wanted to, people to understand like the concept and the why behind vive and so um i heard i heard the speaker the other day and it was so great it really landed with me and i think it sums up my why and he said you are where you are because of your bs and <laughs> and and but but it meant your belief system and so for me my oh. belief system changed which then is what enabled me to to catapult forward and saying you know what i'm just like any other business owner like i i separated myself from they're here i'm here i can only do this they're the ones that get to do all that i'm here like that's that's not for me and so my bs had to change my bs totally i had to drop it like the stories the limiting beliefs like you know my past oh but i'm this oh but i'm that you know i don't have money um all of that had to change so my my belief system my bs and i realized i'm where i'm at because of my bs so if i just change that system then i can go be up there too or or over there or whatever so that changed and for me personally and so vive is about um living mm -hmm. so it's about living big living authentically living free um so i you know it's too too much to write on us on a logo right, but right. <laughs> but that's essentially mm -hmm. what it is vive like go live go live your life that you're meant to live um so uh you know there's also the saying that a lot of people um die at 25 and they don't get buried until they're 75 so that was me that was me at 40 i feel like i was dead and i i always had this like feeling of like god this was right like this was it mm. this was it and so i had this just like unfulfilled um just feel feeling just live, living inside of me and you know mm -hmm. i was operating and i was doing the things and i was going to work and raising mm -hmm. my kids but just very unfulfilled and so um that is when i my first step was doing the festivals and um you know you guys were a big part of that um as well so we did i think two years of festivals put it on here mm. at a downtown area um james weldon johnson park you know um got our and our name started to grow we were able to pull in sponsors um so that you know i didn't have to come completely out of pocket to pay for mm -hmm. everything and um so we were providing these wellness body-based ther therapies for free and trying to market to people who you know wouldn't typically go to these mm. events just because they'd never been invited like nobody ever had a voice to say hey i need you to come here because here's what you're going to experience so um we started with the festivals and then um i think that is what helped us build a little bit of traction or at least a little bit of name recognition once we mm -hmm. did open um you know we had community support we didn't have you know the crowds of people like i wanted but we had some community support and so like media and um, we were able to develop other partnerships that mm -hmm. then helped us grow as well. So it's not always about, you know, just your customers and your clients, you know, those those partnerships, those relationships are also key to your growth. And I do recommend that strongly for anybody going into business um, to go, you know, find some key partners, find some collaborations, find some partnerships, because that's part of your growth as well. So you're talking about specifically events that 
maybe don't have the same metrics, for example, um, if they don't have a lot of people that attend them or if they aren't necessarily um, um, like a large view count or, you know, these these modern metrics that we look at today online, somebody films a video game and gets thousands to millions of views. But this is, the, I guess, the inverse of that. You're saying it's not about... Uh, the number of engagements, it's not about the number of people, but it's about the quality of what you what you bring and what you build from that. Does that... Yeah, impact, impact, impact. And um, yeah, I used to be I used to be really um, enamored with this, like, I got to get my numbers, my my mm. followers, my, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I got to build my my re in reach. It's important. It is. But, you know, what good does it do me to reach 6,000 people and I can't even invite, enroll one, mm -hmm. you know, connect with one person. That mm -hmm. means I am not doing something right in my tactic. Um, so yeah, it, it I had to like really break up with my relationship to numbers. Um, mm. I, I do think though, you know, that numbers and metrics are valuable and I use them now um, to make like sound business decisions. Um, you know, I look at my numbers, I look at what's working, I look at what's not, but different in when we first started and um, you know, I, I just got to grow my followers. I got to grow my followers. It was always about growing the followers. And then I changed to, no, I've got to create impact. I've got to create uh, an emotional connection. Mm -hmm. I've got to create something that's relatable to people. Mm -hmm. And then that will create the growth of everything else. You yeah. know, the people who walk in the doors, the people, you know, who take our workshops, who, you know, purchase our programs. Um, that is more important than, you know, growing the the followers. Yeah, I feel the same way with our businesses that, that we've worked on. Um, the numbers, I think, show you what, is popular and that's that's a valid figure mm -hmm. but i don't think popularity uh, always equates to success and it more commonly equates to you losing control of your business because now you're you're jumping up at somebody else's image of your business of your job of your work and you're trying to to constantly match this popular perception mm -hmm. and it'll work it's not a not i mean Obviously, advertising works. That's why people keep doing it. But there are plenty of businesses that were huge and well advertised and really popular, and and they they lose their way because eventually you you're doing AOL, uh, countless examples, right? Um, of, of businesses that do do great or insanely popular, understand the numbers and the metrics, and eventually they they're they're gone because that public sentiment will shift and change, right? And they weren't built in relationships that last. Right, right. Yeah. I think that's exhausting. I think that's a really great way to exhaust yourself mm -hmm. if you're ch chasing popularity and what's popular and trying to keep up with the trends. I think, yes, you can pull in some of the trends into your marketing or into what you're doing, right? But still remaining brood rooted in your authenticity like what is my mission what is my why who like always coming back to that um because if you start chasing you know popular what's popular you know like you said we'd still be using aol yahoo you know uh <laughs> all of those things that that have now uh gone out and we do have to pay attention to the popularity and the trends and you know it like ai you know, and find a way to incorporate that in what we're doing, but not necessarily then just say, I'm all AI, you know, right. um, we're going mm -hmm. everything 100% AI. No, it's about pulling in these trends, these, these, the uh, as, as we're evolving, as we're changing, pull them in, but still stay rooted in, in your authenticity, your message. That's great that you've been able to bring that to Vive. I, I really think that's... Um, Vive. 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 Yeah. I really How many people say Vive? All the time. I know. Yeah. I'm <laughs> even then, thinking of it from having read it more. And you've said it several times and in my mind. It's still from having read it. Well, I've heard Vive, Vive. Um, and then some people get really confused and they'll go, wait, I thought Vive, Vive was spelt with a, a B. <laughs> No, because it's different. Vive. It's a different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have to say, uh, and we discussed this before in private, that your studio maybe is the most diverse in the city. Oh, yeah. In terms of uh, demographics, in, term, in terms of origins, um, 
and it's really beautiful. And I know that was one of the major yes. reasons, right, for you to to do that. That's really incredible. Uh, and I think one of the most impressive things is that you have a lot of men. Yes. You have a lot of men in your classes. Yes. And that's very rare, I think, for yoga studios. Even though yoga st started just men's pra as a men's practice, but then right. just became purely female. And it's so great to see so many men of uh, yeah different you know, occupation, different age and right yeah ethnicity. like just all over age background career um you know ethnicity um it's just so such a big range a wide range um yeah so sometimes i even have classes with where, where it's all men and <laughs> you know that's kind of still i'm i'm used to it now but in the beginning um I, you know there was kind of like somebody said you know why you have all men at your studio? Because your teachers are all beautiful. And I was like, no, it's not that. People aren't going to come pay and dedicate their time when they could be doing something else, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning, at 5 in the evening when it's crazy busy. And I was like, no, I couldn't listen to that. Um, and not, I knew that. Not to mention that. it, nothing ever comes of it in that direction no. and guys aren't going to chase that nothing long lasting at least no. um yeah no uh so i knew it was something more than that and so what was important to me is like understanding the how do we pull in the the different um groups the different age groups the different you know backgrounds ethnic backgrounds how do we pull that in how do we accomplish that we, like we don't just you know write on a caption on social media all welcome <laughs> everybody welcome mm -hmm. does that work no it doesn't so it's you ha it has to be reflected in like your your staff who's who what do your instructors look like you know are they diverse mm -hmm. in in your team you know if if i stand here and, and this is so funny when i see um and it just kind of like <laughs> cringe but when i see a picture of uh you know an all uh white teaching team and they're like you know we want to cater to the BIPOC community well how how can you expect to attain that when nobody on your team looks like someone like me mm. where I would come in and feel comfortable um so that was really important to me finding you know building this team that was diverse as well um the music that we play it's mm. not you know just like one type of music every teacher kind of has the freedom to play what they want um you know we have within reason um but but you know it, it's it's comforting to the ear when you walk into a space and somebody's playing something that you would play you know mm. at home driving to the studio and suddenly it's like you're no longer feeling like the other person in the room mm. or like you know you're walking into like oh lord who knows what this is going to be <laughs> suddenly there's this like homier feeling like oh i belong here i'm comfortable here this is a good space so um you know being aware of two of our language that we're using when we're speaking to these diverse groups you know how do we make it more inclusive our language you know do we celebrate only the people who can do the most in their you know right. yoga postures mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. ones who can twist and bend who are most flexible which is usually looked has traditionally looked like one type of body but now you know we celebrate everybody equally if you're resting if you're doing the most if you're on your head if you're you know laying down on your back like we celebrate you mm. equally Mm. Yeah. Um, what efforts did you uh, find in Jacksonville specifically uh, that you were able to put into place in order to encourage this kind of diversity that, uh, if I can maybe add, I find strangely absent, as you mentioned, un non represented until you open the studio in, in Jacksonville, when it's so on brand for America and Florida. Mm -hmm. um, how did you bring that to, to Jacksonville as a city? And, and were there considerations you made about this particular geography? Yeah, yeah. So it was, um, it, you know, I had to look at it as, hmm. at first, you know, I wanted to make money. Like just, I just to be very transparent because you know you've got the overhead, and well, you want um, to keep it afloat, and right? Those two things Sustain, are connected, yeah. Right, so. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm charging X amount for classes, which was on brand with what all of the other studios were charging, and so I was trying to keep up with their rates, and then 
you know, like six months into it, I was like, I'm trying to keep up with their rates, but our values and our missions are not the same. Um, and maybe the demographic that I want to attract, you know, can they pay this much money? Sure, probably. Why not? You know, they, I'm not saying, you know, all people of color, or BIPOC people don't have money. That's not what I'm saying. But if they've never experienced yoga and they don't see the value in it, then they might question, hey, do I want to pay $25 a class? Do I want to pay $22 a class? So I had to make these, um, changes in our schedule where we could accommodate you know two dollar classes five dollar classes and so that kind of brought down the barrier of this financial mm -hmm. um obstacle to yoga um so that kind of negated that so people then started feeling comfortable like oh, okay it's five dollars like big deal two dollars big deal you know if i don't like it whatever um but then they liked it and so then we had a um, monthly membership fee that I also had to consider, okay, in the economy that we're at today, our demographic, you know, they're young, they're just starting their careers, they're probably just buying their homes. How can I make this feasible for them to stay with us for the long run? So then I had to bring down our um, our our fees to hold, to stay true to that original mm. mission because mm -hmm. um, I had priced my stuff just according to what all of the mm. other studios were doing. Well, I wasn't all the other studios mm. and I wasn't doing what all the other studios were doing. So I had to then shift. And, you know, in business, they say never take your um, or some people say never take drop your prices. You always want to go up. And I was like, well, no, here I started wrong to begin with. Mm. So I'm now actually starting where I should have started, you know, six a year ago or whatever. Do, um, do you find that brings the more people in the community and that that whole community then is self-reinforcing? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So then I think, you know, I did the math and I was like, well, how many more, you know, members do I have to bring in to recover? And it wasn't that many. And within the month we had met that and um gone over it so because you have high fixed expenses right like the the building the, the building the people yeah the, so if you bring in more people those expenses are the same right right so. yeah yeah so um it ended up working out working itself out and so i think when you do things sometimes you know with integrity and for the right reasons the money will come the money will come just you know do things right, do things with integrity, do things that are just, that are fair, and the money comes. Um, so, would you, would you say it's like almost your, uh, when you stay authentic, and you mentioned that word many times through this conversation, it's almost like you are in the universal flow of life. Yes. You're not against it. So things just fall, not fall in your lap. You still have to work. You have to be disciplined. You have to put in effort. But it's not, it doesn't feel like you're just trying to patch holes and like just stay afloat. You're actually flowing. Right. With, uh, with your investment of time, energy and so on. But you feel like everything is flowing with you. So. Yeah. Not to say that I don't have moments where I, you know, <laughs> freak out and I feel like I am putting out fires every day. Um, I do have those moments, but then I'm like, okay, how, where, where are the solutions? And then, you know, to, to one problem, let's find 10 solutions, not, you know, the other way around. But, um, so what's been wonderful with that is, you know, even in our growth and, and now becoming a yoga institute, you know, and, um, you know, mm -hmm. we're able to certify, um, people to become yoga teachers and again even in that in that um aspect we're also still bringing in those values of you know diversifying and, and being inclusive in our programs and because you know it does cost a, a good amount of money to put on those programs and to pay the, the mm -hmm. faculty and i think we have developed one of the best one of the top programs of yoga teacher certification um, in Jacksonville, um, just with the richness of the faculty that we have. But with that, you know, be presented challenges like, yes, I saw the need for, you know, bringing on or, or um, you know, certifying more yoga teachers that were within our own community. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, OK, here again is that same issue of how are they going to be able to afford mm. this? And so, um, you know, just instead of just saying, oh, well, figure it out. If you want this, you'll go find it. Mm -hmm. You you know, you'll go figure it out. So, again, 
I went out and said, what can I do? What can I do to make it more accessible? So that's where the partnerships and the collaborations came into play. Mm. So started, you know, working with some of my um, uh, key partners and saying, here's the issue I'm having. Here is where I'm at. This is what I've developed. We've developed this amazing curriculum with this talented faculty. There is a need. Can you help me bring this together? And so then, you know, just because we share the same core values, they were able to step up and say, here is some, here's some money, here's scholarship money to help those who are in need and financial, um, that require financial assistance so they can afford it. And so they can, you know, get their 200 hour certification. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and luckily, like you said, it's been this beautiful flow. I haven't, you know, it's just about opening my mouth and saying, mm -hmm. Here's what I need. And so it's like opening it up to the universe and the universe is like bringing it in. Mm -hmm. Is there fear? Is there concern? Is there sometimes doubt? Is there like, uh, I don't know if I can do this? Yeah, it comes up. And immediately, though, the universe kind of steps in and it says, hey, you. Yeah. yeah, don't worry about that. I got you. So, yeah, it's been really nice. That's really so beautiful. I want to talk about the new. Is it OK to talk about the? Well, there are two actually things I still want to cover in the time left. I want to talk a little bit. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, how you ended up in Jack's. Like I have that. to use the restroom. So, okay. I'm sorry, excuse me one moment. I'll be right back. Yes, and we do uh, take potty breaks. We yeah. do that. that doesn't stop. That flow keeps going. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, About myself. Well, what do you want to know? Well, where are you from? <laughs> sure. And how did you, um, why, why you, why you in Jacksonville? What brought you to yeah. Jacksonville? And how you first felt how that feeling being in mm. Jacksonville changed, evolved, and how you feeling? Now? Yeah. So I'm originally from Mexico. Um, I came to the U.S. Um, in to California when I was about five years old, and um, spent most of my, um, you know, young years in california and then joined the military mm -hmm. um and that's how i ended up in florida in mayport to be exact wow. yeah military. how long how many years i only did one term so and what is that that's ignorant. like the i th i think i did three years like three and a half um did you see like the a, a, uh, like a possibility um window in becoming a military in america or so why did you go into military field? I, I mean, just, like... I don't know. I was in college at the time <laughs> and it just wasn't doing it for me. <laughs> yeah, I met a recruiter five days later. I was shipped off to boot camp, like literally like that wow. five days. So um, I, I seem to have a, I like to do things fast. But because um, if you think about it too long, right, that's where doubt sets in. But um, so that's how I ended up in Florida. I spent some time here, got out of the military, went up to D.C., um spent some time up there and then came back to jacksonville florida did not like it i did not want to come back um i just didn't it just didn't feel like home you know i i was raised mostly in california and then being up in dc you know it's so diverse up there it's just you know food culture arts and jacksonville didn't feel that way for me when was that one that not uh 2016 Oh, okay. So relatively recent. Yeah, okay. not, not too long ago. 2016, ended up back in Jacksonville, um, got a divorce shortly after that. And then I was like, oh, shoot, got to find my purpose on my own. What am I going to do now? Um, so I think part of my evolution was, you know, opening up the, the uh, uh, business. But um, I didn't like Jacksonville until I became a business owner. But mm -hmm. again, it was like, you know, that going back to you are where you are because of your BS. So my BS against Jacksonville, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was that there's no culture, there's no diversity. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Where are the people that look like me? Um, and, you know, so that was like my big hang up. And so I realized they're not these things aren't just going to come to me. I have to go find them mm. or I have to go create them or I have to go bring an impact and stick my nose in and mm -hmm. poke around. And, you know, why, why does this, you know, this view, this scene look like this? Could it look different? Could it look my, more diverse? And so once I started taking action and becoming um, a active uh, citizen of Jacksonville, mm. then it changed for me. 
So my belief system about Jacksonville changed and I was like, holy smokes, this is the land of opportunity. Mm. And so I still see things that way. And, you know, when people tell me, oh, I want to open up a business, I'm like, do it in Jacksonville. Do it in Jacksonville. (laughs) I will help you. Yeah. Yeah. Do it in Jacksonville. There's so much opportunity. Yeah. So speaking of business and opening new businesses, share something. Yes. Whatever you're ready to share. I know it's a new baby. Whatever you're ready to share publicly with the... So just naturally in my mission of bringing diversity and culture together to create this beautiful harmony, I was getting pulled into conversations, you know, here and there out in the community. And people saw um, on the C, you know, C-suite level, CEOs and Mm -hmm. presidents saw the impact that we were having. um, And I think they also realized, hmm, we could use some help. So I was getting pulled into conversations of, you know, how to make their spaces or their Mm. services or events more inclusive. And so I was doing all of this, you know, because it was important to me, because I saw the benefit, you know, in it for Hispanics in Jacksonville. And I thought, you know, I'm certainly putting a lot of time and effort into Mm -hmm. other people. Why am I not charging for this? Because I was doing it all for free out of the kindness of my heart. And again, we talk (laughs) about sustainability. That's not sustainable. And if any other consulting firm can charge, why am I not charging for my services? So then that's where the birth of Culturist Consulting Firm came. And so now I'm still doing the same and having these conversations and building strategies for people to, um, you know, be more inclusive of the of the Hispanic demographic, I started off thinking it was just going to be Jacksonville, but it's now grown. um, You know, we're up and down the East Coast with our services um, completely outside of Jacksonville. Sometimes I think I was like, wow, maybe I graduated Jacksonville. I don't know, but um, I hope not. I hope not. No, no, no. (laughs) Like I need Jacksonville. (laughs) Well, I think Jacksonville, you know, I'm working with companies in in some bigger cities and I think Jacksonville still, we, we've got yet to kind of come together on the importance and the value of tapping into these different communities. So we're still a little behind, but I think we're getting better. We're getting better. So um, working with the MLS team here in Jacksonville, Mm -hmm. the new, Hmm. um soccer team um as well so so they're they're on the right track um but uh yeah <laughs> Proof, yeah <definitely> approval. <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> um so now yeah i'm doing the consulting um which just was a natural transition from you know what i was already doing to now this mm. um you know, I need to now build a team because it's gotten bigger than what I expected in a very short amount of time. Um, but, you know, once I find the right players and the right people to pull in, um, we can definitely grow this consulting firm. So and you were awesome. saying that earlier that your focus was on network and benefiting communities. Well, now you're benefiting people who want to benefit communities. It's very meta. Right. Very meta. Yeah. So yeah. is it just to, um, to help like diversify like the Hispanic element? I hope I'm not putting a lot of labels in that question. Or it's like, just diversity in general? Well, just, just because based you're... on my personal experiences mm-hmm. and what I know, you know, I don't want to go into a space and say, I'm going to show you how to reach the black community because mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know, you know, do I know some things? Sure, but I I can't call myself an expert Mm -hmm. at that. Um, I am an expert of understanding the Hispanic culture Mm -hmm. because of who I am. You know, I am an immigrant, I am Mexican. I share, you know, I hold the values of the US, but I also hold my culture and my values and our traditional values still very much at Mm -hmm. heart. So I know what speaks to, you know, the, my, me as a Hispanic, as a Hispanic woman, as an immigrant woman. And I also know what speaks to me as a U.S. citizen. So bringing those two worlds together, you know, to, to, to spread your, your services, your reach, your, um, I mean, it, and it comes down to, to companies for numbers, you know, it's, also increase revenue it's a market you're not tapping into why not Mm -hmm. and there's a there's i I can't remember what the um the number the statistic was like really high it was over 50 percent of hispanics living in the u.s still feel like they're not being um approached or Mm -hmm. even marketed to by big corporations Mm -hmm. so there's a big a big uh a gap there that you know culturists can come in and now help fill and is it correct? I'm just going to think culture us. 
Culturous. That's what, yeah. the, what the intention is culture right. us. Yeah. Come and culture me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I love like, it. We're just helping you <laughs> find culture. Yeah. And, it, you know, it was a tricky word to work with because on um, Instagram and social media platforms, the word cult Oh, you oh. cannot have that in your um, oh. in your titles mm. and in your messaging, which I get. So I had to really like it was a lot of trial error, like, you know, that's why I haven't been here in Culture Club. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're really getting. I also haven't heard the song Cult of Personality, the group Cult of Personality. Yeah. So what's yeah. the handle then, the name? Uh, so I had to do the handle on Instagram is C consulting firm. Um, yeah, on LinkedIn, I'm still, I'm culturist consulting firm, um, uh, Facebook as well. But yeah, um, I have to be careful with my hashtags because things will get taken down, reported. Mm. Um, so G domains just dropped the other day. You could get culture, culture, culturist ing. <laughs> oh, what? Uh? So what's that's the, cool. What's the hype about this in in ending domain? So, like you guys was trying to. It's a new do you domain. Need a, do you need mm -hmm. an any domain that ends in ing? I was like, yeah. No, somebody stole I my have... somebody stole my zing ing. I don't know, my, I got, my, so why is it so I got exciting? zing ing, and I'm in debate right now with the company that I'm like, I think you stole my domain. Why, um, why is it so fun now? Suddenly to have well, when a new top level domain comes up, <laughs> you can get. Your name, for example, a lot of people can't get their name. And you're like Alexandra Ning. Yeah, I'm built cooking now. <laughs> okay, so it's just, cooking. it's just ridiculous, a little bit silly, but there's... Yeah, but it's... Uh, but it's, it's catchy. Right. So it's catchy, top yeah. level domains open up. There's, a, I don't know, there's a lot of them. There's probably a hundred top level domains or more. I don't know how many, but there's a lot. What is so, a top level domain? Like dot .com, dot .us, Oh, I see, okay, dot, okay dot whatever ah uh -huh. so it's like it's a bill cook dot ing yeah ah now so it makes more sense bill, okay. bill cooking okay now it makes more sense yeah. to me. i thought it was like bill cooking dot com it's like what so, is yeah. so special about this? when dot us <laughs> came online i got bill cook dot us right away because yeah. i was traveling okay. internationally and i wanted people to like i'm bill cook i'm from the us it was a mm. pretty easy right easy thing yeah so uh Let's cook see. technology i got dot com that mm -hmm. one.com mm. and i've got a bunch of other cool domains but i wanted like zing.ing and i didn't get that i did get high-fiving though oh that's I, cool high-fiving <laughs> well um it's how much time do i have left all the time in the world oh uh, yeah we have some time feels so like 15 minutes. yeah what's the it's we talked about the past we talked about the so what if you are ready to share and only whatever you're ready to share sure the i don't know the outlook the new maybe projects and new great ideas for viva for the yeah. cultures consulting what can people yeah. look forward to what are you working on so and I whatever know, you want to share what's cooking, yeah. what's cooking? Yeah. <laughs> so you know um originally my five-year plan was to um grow into a franchise and while that's still very much um you know, in, in, in my, my picture of five years, I don't know if five years was a little uh, aggressive. Mm. Um, so, you know, kind of pushed that out to maybe like seven, year seven, start looking at becoming a franchise. Um, because now as far as studio ownership, <clears throat> you know, who typically owns a yoga studio? Like there's another barrier to break there. Mm. So how do I help solve that? Mm. So by creating a franchise, you know, that probably isn't as costly, but with the same business model of, you know, adding different components. So for us, you know, we've got the, 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 the medical offices where we do, you know, the holistic healing. So that has really helped us in building revenue, which was able to sustain the yoga mm. studio until the yoga studio could support itself. So, you know, what we're seeing now is yoga studios that, have opened since I opened, they came after me and are already closed Ooh. or already, excuse me, oh my gosh, or okay. already looking for, you know, people to come in and buy in to take on as partners because they can't, wow. they can't stay open. It's tough. So there are so many also. Yeah. yeah it's always to every business is very tough. The overwhelming majority of them close in the first year. Yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember what the statistic is, but it's like only three yeah. of 10 maybe make it through that first year. Yeah. Um, so this model that we've developed works, 
um, you know, and so if I can show others how to do it, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, exactly what we do, mm-hmm. but bring in something else, find a space that you can build out to have like maybe three rooms, get a massage therapist, get a, I don't know, an esthetician, get something, but so that it becomes like this, this co-op space sort of, mm-hmm. so that you can make, you can sustain and, you know, give yourself some time to build up your, your, your traction, your client, mm-hmm. to build up some revenue so that you can stay open past that year mark. Otherwise it's really tough in the yoga industry, you know, with class pass coming in with all the online stuff, still very strong mm-hmm. and going like it just, the, the yoga industry changed after COVID a lot it used to be where it was a very luxurious industry. You know, you're talking about billions of dollars that were made just off yoga studios. And now, you know, you have to bring in retreats, workshops, programming mm-hmm. to, and if you don't have, you know, the support and the team to help, build that then it is very difficult so to you know come back to the bigger picture um i would like to eventually you know seven year start seeing some franchises out there some viva franchises starting to spread up the east coast um you know something small maybe five and then let it kind of build out into the west coast have you looked at all at the no. Uh, have you looked at all at the possibility of uh, purchasing property and maybe um, building sustainable uh, buildings and uh, and then having the studio inside of that? Yeah, yeah. Um, that There's that. And there's also, you know, the idea of buying some land for retreat mm-hmm. space um, because that's a big industry mm-hmm. right now. Um, you know, and, and I, I hate personally what's happening and, you know, everybody's wanting to do their retreat in Mexico. And I'm like how about here how about here again going back to accessibility not everybody can travel to mexico and take Mm -hmm. a week off which doesn't mean that you know you don't have the money you don't get to do it no let's do it here let's find you know there's still land available so that even if people do have the money they could go to two or three retreats here for right same amount yeah same amount of money some people can't leave their kids that you know it just so creating different options different accessibility options to where you can still accommodate now more people i just feel like you know you're you're missing out on a whole demographic so Mm -hmm. why not tap do the ones in mexico and do the ones here you know so i would love to actually see us acquire a piece of land where you know we do build a yoga studio Mm -hmm. a, a holistic center um, institute, school, um, and also a place where we can do host retreats and offer mm. that. I think with well. the creativity and the energy that you that you bring to the market, I have no doubt that you'll be able to do that. Yeah, it's but it's also the team. Like I, I think our team right now is so solid. Um, you know, we just wrapped up our second cohort mm-hmm. of yoga teacher training, and when I looked at just our instructors and the caliber of knowledge and the way that they deliver the information, like if I would have had to do it again, this would have been the program I would have wanted mm. to do. Um, so yeah, I you know I can be the one, the leader, kind of you know navigating the boat, trying not to crash it. Um, um, but there's, I've got this strong team of like rowers of sailors, you know, aboard my ship that are helping me stay up. Um, want, you know, want to give a shout out to a few of them, maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah. So here, um, she's one of my core, um, one of my core teachers in our uh, 200 hour uh, program. Um, also visionary and full of great ideas. I think you also have like a business background too, so I think you can look at things. Um, from that she angle. was the ceo of mcdonald's <laughs> oh well okay that's a very what? Different, not in america so it was uh it was an american corporation that owned mcdonald's in belarus or belarus uh-huh. and i was very temporarily for like six months tops until uh-huh. they, they were in acting transition president? yeah i was acting as wow but that's from my financial background we had to resist it's not that they rent them like news. hey do you want to be our ceo for six months I'm sure no it was sure. just because yeah it Why was not? <laughs> it was the yeah the past the past related to that's amazing management yeah yeah so but it sounds so crazy that's sure why he likes to mention that now she's the ceo of cook technology yeah that's true the bill cooking 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. She controls what I'm cooking. Yeah, but um, she's part of our team Got and, and has been with me since even before opening. You came on with the festival. The so festival, you've yeah. been mm -hmm. like a big part from the beginning. You know, you were and a part I'm of where we are. I'm so thankful for you Yeah. Know, Oh, because we just met. We didn't know each other. And no. you just, like, trusted that I'll hey, be okay. Hey, do you want to do a festival? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but, uh, Alexandra, I've got Gabi Ruiz, um, who also, I mean, talk about, like, knowing philosophy and the text of, you know, what yoga is really deep-rooted in, um, the foundational text. So, her method and delivery of that is just exceptional. Um, she's also been with me as an instructor in the studio since beginning samantha mora um and then also my right hand woman and daughter macy howard um who you know i'm only in yoga because of her because she said hey mom i want to do this teacher training and i'm like what why do they want that much money where are they are they crazy you know they're just trying to take your money let me go see who it is and then i ended up joining the teacher training with her and then here we are <laughs> When was no. that? That was back in 2016, 17. Okay, so it almost immediately as you moved yeah. to Jax. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wasn't here that long and we started teacher training together. I love so she has yeah. such great energy. Yeah. And a big smile. Caitlin, <laughs> um, who else? Wesley. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and Dan also. Oh, gosh, yes. Dr. O'Leary, who's a big part. Um, so he's our, my partner, um, is the clinical director over the medical offices. So, you know, he does all of our perso personal injury, our chiropractic, and just excellent, excellent bedside manner. Patients really love him, trust him, because, you know, he doesn't BS them. He tells them the truth, like, here's where you are, here's what you need to do. Like, if you don't do those core exercises, those ab exercises, your back is always going to be feeling this way. If you don't deal with the stress, if you don't change your eating habits, if you don't, you know, get more sleep, like, you're going to be in the same place. So he's very honest with his patients, um, and I think they appreciate and respect right, him yeah. for that. So they don't paint these unrealistic goals of their health and their longevity. Well, so I think with Dan, it's also very easy to trust him. First of all, he has, he has a very accommodating an energy and presence uh -huh. but also he is an example of what he's trying to recommend you know, right he'll, he's in a great health you know and great shape and he takes care of himself so it's very easy to believe someone yeah. you know uh who says this because you see the evidence and i think it's For sure part. but i also I, I agree with you so he's not trying to kind of trap them in it's like keeping secret so they keep coming back right, right was his problem or was their problem so he's yeah. given them tools for self-healing and just yeah. come to me when it's like extreme right right fix right you. but then it's you have to put the effort in and i love that yeah i think that all of our all of our team is very much like that we never want to withhold you know what we know <laughs> like and, and because i think there's this understanding that this information is out there it's free you can get it you know you don't have to come to us if you really want to know it you can read you can study you know even with yoga it's this universal information this universal knowledge that you know we don't claim to own and we'll share it and we're also a business so there are things that we do have to do to be able to sustain ourselves and you know grow so um but yeah we're very very yeah. willing very open but i think community. that's also that brings um, respect and trust you know yeah that that kind of open authentic relationship when it truly comes to desire and willingness and readiness to yeah. help people because nobody wants to be sold nobody yeah. wants to be sold nobody wants to be convinced but everybody wants to buy feels good to buy just don't like that nobody yeah. wants to be sold nobody wants, wants to, to be sold nobody you know and so we try to find people that are already in the market mm. for what we offer sometimes there is some education because you know again going back to the demographic that we try to tap into they don't know what they don't know so we put the information the education in their hands so we do a lot of workshops for free and things for free and then it's up to them mm. like we don't try to sell anybody like if this is what you value and this is important to you then if we have it here to offer then there mm -hmm. you go no we both went and also appreciated uh kyle his um uh, acupuncture uh, was um uh, he has a similar um approach to what you just described with dan he's also very i'd say very no nonsense um when you go in the way that he uh 
speaks with you is very direct, mm -hmm. very clear. I don't feel that there's, um, in my case, for example, I'm prone to listen to terms that a person uses, and I often will attribute this to their frame of reference. Mm. And what I really liked about talking with Kyle is I felt that his frame of reference is really open. He's not limited in uh, his view of how he's approaching this, um, uh, approaching acupuncture, and he's got it as a gestalt inside of a of a whole practice mm -hmm. that includes n knowing his patient, knowing who he's talking to, and understanding what's going on. But I don't think Kyle is a part of the court, right? He's just no. like, yeah, he's just yeah. caring. He shares share. the space, yeah. right? He's mm -hmm. one of the practitioners in mm -hmm. your space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just thought that was that that was a nice. Um, I thought it was really great to see that you have this consistency throughout mm. these ideas that you mentioned about. Um, I would I would call it a less common approach of practice. If I could, yeah. I don't want to say that I don't want to say anything against other approaches. So I'm trying to choose my words carefully. Mm -hmm. But it We're is rolling. a no. Yeah. <laughs> but you definitely have a no BS approach that yeah. pragmatic people like me really appreciate. Sometimes so many people are in the business of humans and, and human interactions, but they don't know humans. Mm. You know, they don't understand the psychology of humans. They don't understand, you know, and I think that gives us like an edge of being, um, you know, yoga instructors and understanding, especially very trauma based. Our studio is very heavily trauma informed, trauma based. So we understand then when people sometimes come in stressed or, you know, lashing out or just, you know, showing up a certain type of way we understand it has nothing to do with us mm. and we understand and know kind of how to like redirect the conversation back to them to figure out to have the breakthrough to have the 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 realization of wow what's going on with me today why am i behaving mm. the way i'm behaving and so i think that gives us this like edge of of being able to work with people of being able to accommodate and not change who we are but respect mm -hmm. who they are, where they're at in that moment, and also know that it's just temporary, you know, and that that probably the next time we have an encounter or an interaction with them, they're going to be maybe totally different mm. um, when you give them the proper environment, the proper advice of how to breathe, of how to move, of meditation, you know, they come in so transformed, so different, then you're no longer dealing with the same person. But I think that just background for our team just kind of gives us an edge of knowing how to work with people um, in the very best way to achieve the very best outcome. That's so beautiful. And I like how you were for at least 30 seconds of holding your your hand on your heart while you were talking. Oh, I don't know, I know. if you even registered that. Yeah. But yeah. I always want, want to do this too. But anyway. <laughs> I do that a lot when I speak about people because it's like I, you know, we share this humanity. It's about understanding the interconnectedness between all of us. And so when I talk about people, I know I'm talking about myself. As in well. some cultures, uh, uh, I think the last time I saw that was uh, in Morocco. But it's not just limited. But this is how they greet, you know. They always put the hand on their heart and they just, mm -hmm. like, yeah, uh, give a little nod. And I always find it so beautiful. I kind of, like, I think, incorporate it on my own. But anyway, digressing. Um, tell us where we can find you, where Viva is on Hendrix, right? Viva Studio mm -hmm. and the Jack's Healing yeah. Center is Natural Healing In Center. San Marco. It's on Hendrix San Marco, Boulevard Hendrix in San, Marco, Avenue, San Marco. Near V Pizza. No, more like near Barmolino. More near Barmolino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all in the same vicinity. <laughs> yeah, so we're at 1550 here locally in Jacksonville, 1550 Hendricks Avenue, um, right across the uh, street from the tennis courts mm -hmm. and the San Marco Library. So that's usually the reference points that um, I use. I could use others that I think a lot of people know, the, the dispensary. Move dispensary. <laughs> the yeah. move dispensary. Yeah. I, the move like, dispensary I try that, not yeah. to, you know, make assumptions when I say that, yeah. but a lot of people know move dispensary. But we're in that same strip, it's called, strip called the Mango Plaza. Um, so we're there hoping to, you know, one day expand mm -hmm. in Jacksonville. Um, today's not the day, but eventually. Soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so you can find us on social media platforms, vive.yogastudio, mm -hmm. um, and also Jack's Natural Healing, our website, w, you know, jacksnaturalhealing.com. 
It's all going to be in the description, right? You're going to have like, mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever. Yeah, if you would send me the link. So, okay. Friend, thank you so much yeah, for finding time you're in so your welcome. super busy um, schedule for doing goodness. Yeah. For Ask this a world. busy person, they'll get it done. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know. I know. That's yes. true. That is true. My, the, when I'm less, it's dangerous when I have too much free time. <laughs> it's dangerous up here and it's dangerous, you know, just in what I end up, my choices. So I like busy for me is good. I wander off. If I, if I have too much free time, I'll end up in another country, another yeah. place, doing yeah. something. I'll, I have to be busy or I just mm. wander off and don't come back. Yeah. I do random things like I go by a tree or something. <laughs> Yeah. I love that. Well, at least it's the good dangers. Well, well it's really a pleasure. Always, yes. we always love hanging out with you. Yeah, and, and we would love. I mean, especially when the time passes and if there's more things to share uh, with the Jacksonville community and beyond, would like to have you back. Great, yeah, I right. would love to. Thank you guys thank so you. much. Well, thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, I'll uh, see if I can figure out how to turn this off from here. New, yeah. new skill. Yay! I'm like off-road driving on this couch. Do do do. <laughs>